This is actually a LinkedIn post from Aaron Cordovez, uh, who is a big private label guy with Zulai Kitchen, uh, does some great work. But uh, he's talking about uh, package variations on Amazon listings and how Amazon is basically letting it fly, even though it's kind of against the uh, image requirements for the main image where you can put text on a bottle or on the packaging that isn't actually on the packaging to help you stand out in search results. Um, you know, you can also put like the flavor and by putting maybe raspberries or strawberries and stuff like that. And he's talking about how a lot of people, you know, say that's against terms of service and stuff like that. But in reality, Amazon does it themselves Lots of people are doing it, and it can really help uh, getting a increased um, click-through rate for your products. So why don't we jump over to you, Rachel? What are your thoughts on putting extra content on images and going into that little bit of a gray area? I think the, the biggest concern is depending on your category, it'll get your listing suppressed. So there's that. So like, there, there's a few things where Amazon's policies don't get enforced or... They get enforced randomly if somebody reports you or if seller support actually sees something and they refuse to cooperate with you. Uh, but sometimes their automation actually can catch things. They, they've been improving over the last, probably I would say the last year. Um, they actually launched a new tool on AWS um, that specifically is called recognition. That's specifically for image recognition, hence the name. They're not very clever about their names there. And the goal there is to recognize certain items in images, and that's what the software is for. And so, of course, they repackaged it nicely, and now they're selling it to AWS um, customers. And it's much better than it used to be. So if you want to do something like that, you, you, what you can't do is you can't make it obvious to a, a bot, basically, that can recognize images. Um, and so what I've seen people do is, is do full-on digital mock-ups where it looks like the actual box, everything looks correct. And that's just not what the customer gets. Um, and so sometimes the customer, they'll be like, so I got a different box and that was weird, but whatever, I guess. <laughs> so mm -hmm. Sometimes it can have a bit of a customer experience impact as well. Yeah. It, and you mentioned there in the beginning, depending on the category, uh, like for example, if you're maybe if you're buying shoes or a t-shirt or something and you don't get exactly what's imaged, that's going to be a, or what's shown, that's going to be a lot bigger issue than you know, getting a vitamin that doesn't say sugar-free at the top or something like that. Maybe it says it down below in smaller print. Yeah, exactly. And the other thing is that you mentioned shoes and clothes. Those are actually the two categories that will immediately suppress your listing for having any words on the primary image. Yeah, yeah. And I, I was playing with this just recently where we tried to put some um, text in like a circle next to the product because it didn't really work well to put it on the product. And that immediately got taken down for having text in the images. So the bots caught that really quickly. And so you really got to be careful. It's got to look like it's on the actual packaging of the product. Um, how about you, Kevin? You got some thoughts on this? Yeah, actually, uh, Stephen Hope did a video on this in the My Amazon Guy channel, just to plug that real quick, uh, the other day. And... His take is basically, as long as you're doing this in a way that helps the customer, it, yes, this is a gray area, but generally speaking, you can get away with it. In the worst case, it's going to happen oftentimes. Now, granted, we're not talking about apparel or shoes here, but in most cases, um, they'll just make you add a different image. And so if it's helping the customer, then they usually don't care. One of the things he did was he actually Googled what are the top consumer brands. And so I don't know if I want to say names of brands, but let's say a printer company that you've probably heard of that has two letters. Um, he was showing one of their listings and there was like a purple printout that said six months of ink or something to that effect. And that there was um, a, a toothpaste. There's two big brands of toothpaste in this country. So pick it was one of those two. And he basically was showing that the package says, you know, you get six items or whatever it said on the packaging. He goes, that does not say that on the packaging because he had ordered it himself. Mm -hmm. And so 
big brands are starting to do this too. So it's really coming down to like, if you're adding, let's say a keyword into the image, like and a keyword on the packaging. And like the example that Aaron had given and uh, the example that you cited was like a, a ribbon at the top. Chances are someone's not going to fight Amazon and ask for a refund because it didn't have a pink ribbon at the top of the bottle. They probably won't remember it. Where you can probably get yourself into trouble is like, let's say it's gift packaging and it looks completely different. Maybe not like just a couple of keywords are different on the packaging, but like the packaging itself is not it, yours comes in a plain white box, but you made it look like it was this ornate gift box. Well, that's materially different. Yeah. Um, so as long as it's not materially different and then adding text is where you can also get into trouble, like somewhere other than the box itself. And uh, John Aspinall, who actually used to work my Amazon like, guy when I was at PickFu, one of the things he's taught is if you use Canva and you're adding the text that he does 75% transparency so that that way um, it kind of looks more like it's on the box because to Rachel's point, the uh, the bots are getting better at picking up these things. And so where people also sometimes get declined is, you know, they, they try to make it look like there's this... Um, this ribbon or something kind of hanging off to the side or a tag that clearly isn't there. I think the bots are starting to get smart enough for that one and add a keyword there. So packaging, or if it makes sense on the product where you're not materially changing what the product is, mm -hmm. usually you can get away with it. Yeah. Yeah. And one thing interesting I seen the other day, um, it might've been a month or so back, but uh, I seen a, the Amazon echo listing came up for me. And Amazon had like a bluish blackish background and then text written at the top, you know, Amazon Echo and then the Echo there in the middle. So clearly we're breaking our own rules. rules. Uh, we'd all get taken down for that. So don't go that extreme because, you know, Amazon skirts their own rules all the time. But um, if you're careful about it, you can do a lot of cool stuff. Uh, Leslie, what do you think? You got some input on that? So I agree with what Rachel said at the beginning that you really need to Photoshop this like the best Photoshopping you've ever done. It has to really look like it's part of the actual product and the image. It can't look like it's something that you wrote over the top of it. That's not going to fly because eventually Amazon could pick that up. Are they enforcing against this right now? Not that I've seen. And, you know, that's what we specialize in is enforcement. We see what they're enforcing on all the time. And this isn't a trend right now that they're enforcing, but they could. Um, and then I just want to throw out the big caveat for everyone that you need to hear, which is Amazon does stuff all the time to break their rules. Never, ever, 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 ever take what Amazon is doing on the retail side for their products or for vendor and say, well, they did it so I can or other seller did it, so I can. Um, Amazon's enforcement is incredibly uneven. There could be a million other people literally breaking a rule. And if you're the one who gets caught, that is not a defense. Um, so so like your Echo example, uh, never say, well, they had text in that primary image. I'm cool um, because, you know, seller performance doesn't care. They'll just laugh and they aren't even looking at what vendor and retail do they they're following their own sops which say that you lowly seller cannot get away with that yeah 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 and i think the important thing to remember is that they're not enforcing it right now but they could at any time um the good thing about an image being taken down it's usually a very quick fix so you're going to want to have a backup image ready just in case that goes down you can throw it up and 10 minutes later your listing will probably be back up and going but you know, Amazon can change the rules of the game at any time. Yeah. And one thing just on my, to know on myself as a seller, I have an image that they must have taken down because if you go to the listing, it's the old image. But when I look in my orders, the thumbnail for that order is the image that they're no longer showing. So I got kind of slapped to the wrist, but it was no slap to the wrist. All I did was just revert back to the other image. So yeah. Um, yeah. And that's there's not too. That's kind of a good good hack. I don't know if it's always going to work, but uh, and I'm assuming they're pulling that old image from the previous one you had uploaded. Mm -hmm. um, so maybe make sure that you upload the correct image, air quotes, correct image first. Life. Let it go live and then change it to 
the one that you've manipulated a little bit that might help it so it doesn't go down. It just reverts back to the old image, perhaps. Hard to say. I don't know if that's exactly how that works or where they're pulling those from, but that would be my best guess. All right. So, yeah, definitely give it a shot if you're not doing that already, if you're in a category that uh, you can get away with that. This has been another episode of the Amazon Seller School podcast. Thanks for listening, fellow Amazon seller. And always remember, success is yours if you take it.